Kudos Onikeku. That's my name. Hey, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a better <laughs> way to describe <laughs> myself. Because I, yeah, I'm above many other things. I'm a dancer, a choreographer. I sometimes consider myself as a social and cultural entrepreneur as well, because uh, what we do usually is is using um, the dynamism of, of 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 African art to to bring it into the social sphere, into the public space, into the into the dynamism of the of the city of Paris, especially where we're based. I think, I, I, yeah, I mean, I think it's very, uh, it's, uh, it's humbling to call me an activist, but I, I'd rather stay an artist because I, I, I think already that art and act, artists and activists, I think they are like muses for one another. For yeah. So I, I'd rather stay with the artist part and, and, and tap for what the activists are doing. Yeah. Because I think personally, when I think about Fela, I think Fela is more an artist than an activist because he, he's attacking something, but at the same time is using beauty, which you cannot deny that it's beauty, it's poetry, it's, uh, it's music. So he understands his music so well that he can use it to do whatever he wants to do. But you know Fela also puts his life on the line. He puts his of body course. on the Art is line. about your life. I, I, <laughs> I don't think there's any artist who has succeeded in being something without putting his whole art and his whole life into what he's doing. So for me, it's also the same way of you trying to use art to, 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 to talk about beauty, of course, but, but above beauty to make it also um, useful. Yeah, because I think I always, one thing I always think is is, is, is as a child, we most of the people who are dancing, let me just stay on dance. They, when you ask them, How did you start? they will tell you, Oh, and I was a kid, I was doing that, I was doing this. And then the next, one, uh, next question I will ask them is, So, when you, as you were a kid, what style of dance were you doing? Then they will be like, I, I, I don't know, I was just dancing. I said, So, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to always keep true and stay true with the creativity of that child that was dancing and without any style, without any form. Because I believe that to, 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 to discover God, we have to be alone. And for me, this thing about aloneness, this solitude of my own experience that is very personal, and also my own journeys, my, my, my experiences, which is the way I, I left Lagos to France, blah, blah, blah. All of that, I tried to bring it back to that childhood, which was very creative. I'm a part of a group. Yes. I have my own company okay. based in Paris. And um, I also do other work with other people. So your company, how many people are there in the assembly? Um, we work based on projects. Okay. Uh, but in the full time, we are just two. Myself and the, and the managing director. Uh, then any other thing we do is based on one project. We have a creation to make. We invite like 10 people, 15 people, whoever we're going to use for that project. And as, as soon as we're done with that project, we go into the next project. But usually we are working on like, I don't know, like three, four, five projects at a time. Actually, because at some point in Nigeria, um, the the, the dance world was, of course, as we have no government, so it was much more controlled by the French Cultural Center, hmm. by the French, French government. And the only thing we could do then was to perform at the French Cultural Center. That was the only space available for us in Lagos. Then, as we moved on, I started having problem with it because when we go perform, all, all the audience are French experts and, and you know, all white people. 
and I was kind of like working a lot in France then. I have no problem performing for French people in France. But when I get to Nigeria or when I go to Mali or Senegal, I also want to feel like I'm also performing for people from these places, not French experts everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I decided to kind of like remove myself from all of that system and uh, say, okay, if I remove myself from that, what, what am I going to be left with? To the street. So that was why the idea of performing on the street and mechanic spaces at the beach and the university space, all of that, just to create another kind of interference with, with the real people. And this is the kind of thing we've been doing a lot with our work since then. How do you make money in everything you do? Number one, you need to make your audience. The moment you have your audience, you don't need to think about the money. Because well, there are a lot of people who came to watch you dance. Yeah, and those for experiences. me, above, above trying to create an audience or whatever, was to make a statement. Yes. It was to make a statement That's first. what I was saying about your, the activist part <laughs> of it. Yeah. So you wanted to make a statement about the French not being able to... You, you were tired about, of performing... About the way we do our things, whereby we only think it has to be one way. If I try the other way, I might be hungry, I might not be able to eat, I might blah, blah, blah. But I just wanted to say, no, maybe we can also try to go other ways and, and we will see what comes out of that. I do, I do, I do a do lot you, actually. Do you go for them? I, what I don't, I don't for now because because I, it's not really what I believe in. It's not my 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 way. I, I think Nigeria has always been floating between different different tendencies because uh, now there is this music video. Then later there was a what is it called um, reality dance shows. I think they're getting tired of that again now. Now they're going to Broadway. And even as of now, many people are calling me to come do Broadway. I said, one thing interesting about Broadway is closer to what I'm doing. I, I will probably maybe not perform, maybe choreograph for them. Because yeah. to perform is something else, to choreograph is another thing. Because as a performer, uh, I think I'm in, in my career now, I'm getting into that position of, of being more choreographer than than just a performer. I mean, would you have performed, for example, on Fela on Broadway? Ah, have you seen the show? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't see it, but I met Beauty Jones uh, in 2008 when he was already Wouldn't working on it. it. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I have my own personal opinion about that, that show. You had reservations. But I haven't about. seen it, so yeah. okay. my opinion is just based on ethics and not based on what it is itself. Wow, yes. <laughs> Um, it was it was a bit difficult. I, in two thousand and nine, I I finished my schooling in France. My idea was to immediately go back to Nigeria, form my own company there, and and start working full time from Nigeria. But it was it was just impossible. Why? It was because I think many things was involved at the same time. Now, number one, I think the level of of corruption that I felt. I thought I, I thought I could have mastered it. <laughs> I thought it's something I could master. It didn't work but, out. But I realized that it's not even, I'm not even talking about the corruption in high places now. I'm talking about even in, in the grassroots, in the people, what people work for, mm -hmm. you know, what motivates people to work was very, very far away from the way I, I envisage things. And for me to be able to make it happen, I have to just go solo. Mm. And that didn't work. And it didn't really turn out well for me. I just did it drive you back into uh, the yeah, hands yeah, of the French? Uh, yeah, I know. Not in the hands of the French because because I have my own I, I schooled in France. Yeah. So I had my own connections, I had my own friends, I have my own supporters who've been supporting my work. The idea then was not actually to stay in Nigeria full time. But of course there's no way I could survive as a dancer in Nigeria full time, no way. But at least to keep working on my, on my connections in the United States, in Japan, in all over the world, then, then, but making my base in Nigeria. So, but that even, the question of, being, of having my base in Nigeria was also very, 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 very impossible. Maybe gradually now, I, s I thought that it was a bad decision for a student who's just leaving school, going back to Nigeria. 
because you don't even have experience of the market. You don't even know where you're going into. So now that I have a bit of experience on how things work, I can still handle it now. So do you plan to go back? I do, really. Yeah. When? When? Mm -hmm. As soon as I can. Yeah. <laughs> Afro Parisian Network um, actually is one of the reasons why I, I feel I'm much more, uh, you know, okay in Paris because in the last few years I've been creating works and touring, creating works and touring and all of a sudden I just realized that I actually don't have a, uh, I don't have a local, you know, because I'm always traveling. Uh, I have no local audience anywhere in the world. Mm. Uh, it used to, I thought, it used to be Nigeria and Nigeria used to be my, my base, my local, and things I master everywhere. So, but the moment I left Nigeria in 2009 and this idea of exile started growing on me, I, I lost it totally. For like five years, I was just floating from one place to another, one place to another. So now, Paris came back um, as a kind of a reality that, okay, I, I think I've been based in this country for the past seven years, and I didn't want to acknowledge it. <laughs> so immediately I acknowledged that, then I started thinking of, okay, what can we do here? I realized that the, the, the Af Afro-descendant community in Paris, or in France in general, is very, very problematic. Uh, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions of identity, of, of, of faith, of, of even understanding what it means to be African, because uh, the assimilation process of French is very different from that of the, of the Anglo-Saxons. Mm. So people don't kind of accept themselves for who they are or try to be something that they imagine everybody wants them to be. So we said, okay, let's start this new uh, network where we bring people from different um, African origins, like Africans from the continent, Africans who were born in France, Africans from the United States, from, from the Martinique, from the Caribbean islands. And come together and have conversations and meet one another, see what's happening, what people are up to, and maybe from there create a kind of a, a bond and before we know, we don't know what's going to come out of that. Like five, six years ago, I was, I was very, very an active part of, of all of that. But in a very short time, I... I realized that it was not for the same purpose that mm. I was interested in it, that many people were interested in it. There is this, this, this glossy thing about, you know, about how things, they, about how we imagine things to be. Because I think people were, were born in the 80s, as you can know, most of us were born in the 80s or late 80s actually. Yeah. And it was, it was a total crisis. So people kind of like know what it means to be in crisis and they don't even know what it means to be free, right? Because yes. they were born already in that, crisis, in, right. that, in that kind of like harsh times. So I think there's a kind of a dream of just doing away with all of that. Mm. A kind of utopia, living somewhere. And so immediately this new generation of, of young, uh, uh, educated, you know, uh, breeds that growing up, the number one thing in their mind was to, I don't know, was to, to, have, a, to have fun and to create a, a future, they, to create slogans and, and things like that, which in reality has nothing to do with, with, with the real work. Because for me, I think there's a, lot, there's a lot of work ahead of us. And this work usually requires us to be, to be creative, especially because um, if, if, the, if the people just before us, if they've been doing all the fight, you know, to be able to at least gain a certain kind of liberty, a certain kind of uh, freedom of speech, a certain kind of all of those things, now what do we do with all of those freedoms and all of those liberty that we have? What do we do with them? Is it not now to start rebuilding? And, and in the process of rebuilding, it has to come in a very creative way, not in a fighting way anymore because so we you saw, don't believe in fighting? No, because we saw the generation just before us did that. They've already done a lot for us. But no, what, what I mean by we don't need to fight is there is no, there is not going to be, I'm talking for my generation yeah. really, based on what is real, what is reality now. 
the people like like uh, I, I listened to the interview you guys made with um, with with German. Yes. People like this have been fighting all this while to create that space for us. Yes. So now, for me, I think we have enough space now to start occupying those spaces with innovations. Mm -hmm. And this is the only way we can go forward to the next level. That is to say, start producing things, start exporting things, mm -hmm. start being creative, start, start occupying those spaces. Because I have the feeling that in the next few years, in the next 10 years maybe, Nigeria is going to be taking a very important space in Africa. That is to say, economic-wise, creativity-wise, art-wise, uh, Nollywood-wise, all those kind of things. It's going to be we, we, we're going to we're going to be almost what South Africa is now mm -hmm. on the continent. So there's a lot of people looking up to us. There's a lot of I travel in the Afri in Africa a lot. I know what people are hoping for in Nigeria, and for me, I think we should be that that generation that takes it to the next level. And what, how do we do it? Is by is by working hard and being being very uh, steadfast and not also going in the same direction of what we've seen all this while, you know? Like how, how we create politics out of existing politics. No, we need to try to do away with the existing system and create other patches of systems like like applications, like, like websites, and like creating new kind of flux that's going to change the conversation away from the mainstream. I think Sarah Potter is doing it already. This is, this is what I mean to be creative. Not to say, oh, I, I finished my school. I want to go work in NTA. This is the only thing that is existing. I want to go work in Guardian. Like, like, like you don't have all the tools now to yeah. do, to create your own things. Yeah. That's what I meant by, by, by being creative now. We should be much more entrepreneurial and, 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 and being supportive of that that's that's that fight that's that's collective will to to move to the next level oh i was performing at uh, at moma the okay. museum of modern art what were you performing um i was performing with uh, um, with a friend of mine that i work with who is having a kind of a cap launch for three weeks at the moma so he invited me to join him wow how, how did that go it went well very yeah. well very well do you make a lot of money from doing this? If I don't, I would, I would have quit. <laughs> I would have stopped it a long time ago. Thank you so much. <laughs>